ever wondered how to make the perfect makluba at home? Well, you're in the right place. Today we're exploring the tantalizing world of makluba, a beloved dish with roots deep in the Middle Eastern culture. Renowned for its layers of fragrant rice, succulent meat, and crisp vegetables, makluba has won hearts worldwide. We're about to embark on a culinary journey, providing a step-by-step -step guide to crafting this delectable dish in your own kitchen. So, are you ready to dive into the rich flavors of the Middle East? Here we go! First things first, gather all the necessary ingredients. Let's start with our star players, rice and meat. You can choose between chicken or lamb, depending on your preference. Next, we've got a trio of veggies, cauliflower, eggplant, and potatoes. These add a delightful texture and depth to our dish. Now, on to the spices. We're using a blend of aromatic spices to bring our makluba to life. This includes turmeric, allspice, and a dash of cinnamon. These spices will imbue the dish with a warm, rich flavor that's characteristic of Middle Eastern cuisine. Don't forget the extras, a sprinkle of pine nuts for a bit of crunch, a handful of parsley for a pop of color, and a squeeze of lemon for that tangy punch. Each of these ingredients plays a vital role in compiling the symphony of flavors that is makluba. Got all the ingredients? Great, now let's move to the preparation part. It's time to prepare our ingredients. Our first step is to wash the rice. This process is crucial as it removes the surface starch that can make our makluba gummy and sticky. Run cold water over the rice until it runs clear, then let it soak for about 30 minutes. This soaking time allows the grains to swell, leading to fluffier rice in the final dish. While our rice is soaking, let's move on to the vegetables. We have eggplant, potatoes, and tomatoes. Wash them thoroughly under cold running water. For the eggplant and potatoes, we peel the skin off, then cut them into thick round slices. The tomatoes, on the other hand, we slice them into thin rounds. The thickness of the slices is key here. Thicker slices hold up better during the cooking process and give our dish a hearty texture. Next up is our meat, and for this recipe, we're using chicken. Now, the chicken needs to be marinated. This step is significant as it infuses the chicken with flavor and tenderizes it. In a bowl, mix the spices, turmeric, allspice, cinnamon, cardamom, and black pepper with some olive oil to form a paste. Rub this paste all over the chicken, making sure every nook and cranny is covered. Let it sit and marinate for at least an hour. The longer it marinates, the more flavorful it will be. While our chicken is marinating and our rice is soaking, let's get the rest of our ingredients ready. We have onions, garlic, and a medley of spices. Dice the onions and mince the garlic. As for the spices, we're using cumin, coriander, and bay leaves. These give our makluba its distinctive flavor. Remember, the key to a great makluba is in the preparation. Take your time with each step. This isn't just about cooking, it's about creating a meal that's bursting with flavor and tradition. With all the ingredients prepped, we can now start cooking our makluba. Let's fire up the stove and start cooking. First things first, we're going to cook the meat. We've got our lamb. You can also use beef or chicken, depending on your preference. Place the meat in the pot and let it sear on each side. This gives it a beautiful brown color and locks in those delicious flavors. Once it's seared, we'll add in our aromatic spices, turmeric, cardamom, and cinnamon. Also, a dash of salt and pepper for that extra kick. We'll let this simmer until the meat is tender and flavorful. While our meat is simmering away, let's turn our attention to the vegetables. We have a vibrant selection here. Eggplant, cauliflower, tomatoes, and bell peppers. Slice and dice your veggies, then lightly fry them until they are golden and crispy. The goal here is to coax out their natural sweetness, which will balance out the rich, savory flavors of the meat. Now it's time for the star of the show, the rice. Rinse your rice under cold water until the water runs clear. This removes any excess starch and ensures we get perfectly fluffy grains. Then, we're going to lightly toast the rice in the same pot we used for the vegetables. This step infuses the rice with a wonderful depth of flavor. All right, all our components are ready. Now comes the fun part, layering. Layering is the heart and soul of makluba, which literally translates to upside down. So let's start with the meat, spread it evenly at the bottom of the pot, then layer your fried vegetables on top of the meat. Finally, we'll add our toasted rice. Pour in enough broth to cover the rice, then let it simmer. The magic of makluba happens when the flavors of the meat, vegetables, and rice meld together. As it cooks, the flavors seep upwards, infusing every layer with a symphony of taste and aroma. So let it take its time. Patience is key here. 
while it's tempting to peek, resist the urge. We want to keep all that steam trapped in the pot to ensure our rice cooks evenly. Just let it do its thing. Trust me, it'll be worth the wait. Finally, when the rice is cooked and has absorbed all the broth, turn off the heat. Let it rest for a bit. This allows the flavors to settle and the structure to firm up, which will make the big flip easier later on. And there you have it. Our makluba is almost ready. But hold on, we're not done yet. The most exciting part is still to come. So stay tuned as we navigate the grand finale, the big flip. Now comes the most exciting part of our cooking journey, the flip. This is where the magic happens, where we transform our carefully crafted layers into the stunning makluba. First, you'll want to ensure that your makluba has fully cooled. This is crucial because it helps everything stick together better when we flip it. Patience is key here. Trying to flip your makluba too soon could lead to a culinary catastrophe. Next, choose a flat, large plate or tray that's wider than the pot you've cooked your makluba in. Place this over the top of your pot. Keep a firm grip on both the pot and the plate. This is where caution comes into play. We don't want any mishaps during this critical step. Now, with confidence and a steady hand, swiftly invert the pot. Remember, it's all in the wrist. You'll want to flip it as if you're turning a pancake. Once you've flipped it, give the pot a few gentle taps to make sure everything has released. Then slowly lift the pot off the plate. You should be greeted by the beautiful sight of your layered makluba. Take a moment to admire your handiwork. You've just performed the big flip. This isn't just cooking. It's a culinary performance that you've flawlessly executed. Congratulations, you've successfully flipped your makluba. Now let's move on to the final touches. A dish is not just about taste, but also about presentation. As we move into the final touches and presentation of our makluba, this is something to keep in mind. A bit of garnish can transform your dish from ordinary to extraordinary in no time. Fresh parsley is a classic choice for makluba. Its vibrant green color not only adds a pop of color, but also a hint of freshness that balances the rich flavors of the dish. Toasted nuts, on the other hand, add a delightful crunch and a nice touch of warmth. Almonds, pine nuts, or even walnuts would work perfectly. Feel free to get creative here. Maybe sprinkle some pomegranate seeds for a sweet and tangy surprise or a drizzle of yogurt for a cool, creamy contrast. As for serving suggestions, makluba is traditionally served with a side of yogurt or a simple cucumber salad. But again, there's no hard and fast rule. Serve it with what you love. And there you have it. Your homemade makluba is ready to be served. So that's how you make a delicious makluba at home. In our culinary journey today, we've unveiled the secrets behind this Middle Eastern delicacy. From the careful selection of the freshest ingredients to the methodical preparation, every step matters. We started by preparing our ingredients, which included a medley of vegetables, rice, and meat, all seasoned to perfection. Then we moved on to the heart of the process, cooking the makluba. The layering of the ingredients is a crucial step that gives this dish its unique look and taste. Each layer is a new flavor waiting to be discovered. But the real star of the show was the big flip. It's a moment of suspense, but also a moment of magic. That's when our layered creation transforms into a beautiful, edible tower of deliciousness. So go ahead, invite your friends over and impress them with your culinary skills. Until next time, happy cooking.